With the recent extensions of Mitch Keller, Zach Wheeler, and Brian Bayo, I know Keller's a little bit a while ago, but stay with me. It's hard to not think about the Seattle Mariners extending some of their young starting pitching, right? It just seems like a natural progression for us as Mariners fans to be like, hey, why can't we join in on the fun? So Logan Gilbert, George Kirby are the main topics here. Brian Miller, Bryce Wu, we're a bit of ways away from them, I would say. Like, let's not get too eager here. But I will concede that if they were to be extended a contract of some sort of buying out arbitration years or their early stages of their career, it's closer to what Brian Bayo got in his six year, $55 million deal. If I see anybody saying Logan Gilbert or George Kirby for around the same price, I beg you to just go take a look at the difference between Brian Bayo and George Kirby and Logan Gilbert. I understand that Brian Bayo has good upside. He had a pretty solid year in 2023, but Gilbert's done it for two years running. George Kirby finished top 10 in the Cy Young for a good reason. Not to say that Bayo is poor in any way, but Logan Gilbert and George Kirby are better than him. And they're also better than Mitch Keller who got five years, $77 million. It's 15 ish million dollars a year for your extension prices that we're looking at, you're probably shooting above Mitch Keller at this point in time. The Mariners last offseason extended Luis Castillo after acquiring him. They got him on five years, 108 million, which looking at the value, it's actually pretty solid. It's a good deal for what you're getting out of Luis Castillo over the next couple of years. And if you're looking to get, you know, one or two years of Logan or George's free agency kind of purchased out because you're buying out the rest of their arbitration. You're going to show them guaranteed money instead of settlement money where Logan Gilbert and the Mariners agreed to $4.05 million contract in arbitration this off season. Next off season, if Gilbert continues to pitch well, like back to back years of a over 105 ERA plus and being consistent on the mound, you know, 32 starts, 190 ish innings, Logan Gilbert might be pushing double digits in terms of arbitration. So could the Mariners sway him into some sort of contract extension, maybe six years, puts him at a free agent in 2030, 2031-ish. And at $100 million, it's around 16, $17 million a year. You might have to go a little bit further than that, but I think that would be close to what it would take for getting a guy like Logan Gilbert to sign an extension. And I think he's probably the more likely option than George Kirby, just because they've kind of, it seems like they've had the conversation already. I know there was a long time ago where he was like offered a contract, maybe similar to like the Evan White situation where he signed one as a young prospect, maybe even in his rookie season coming up and it was not agreed upon, but you know, it's a conversation that they had and locked on had a great interview with Jerry DePoto yesterday talking about there's a, there's a segment where Jerry's saying that they've kind of had the conversations about wanting to extend some of the core guys. From from the very start, we've we've always maintained that that's our goal is is to bring in players who fit our core, make sure that that you know contractually we extend them to the point that they're able to you know we can we can fix a roster. This is what it looks like, and and we have a number of players on our current roster that we count in that bucket. Some are already extended, and some we would like to and. We've already had numerous conversations on on a handful of different players. If I had to pick two core guys for this Seattle Mariners roster right now that I would want to extend. It's keeping together the tandem of Cal Raleigh and Logan Gilbert, the roommates from the past, the buds on the team. Keep them together. Keep that chemistry high. Of course, George Kirby is a phenomenal pitcher. He's better than Logan Gilbert. Admittedly, he just is straight up. He has a higher ceiling. But the price to extend him or buy out his arbitration in a year or two of free agency, it's a bit higher than Logan Gilbert's, unfortunately. And I said that Logan's probably similar to around Mitch Keller. And I mentioned Zach Wheeler. I don't want to say that George Kirby will reach Zach Wheeler heights, but that is who the Mariners pitchers should be trying to model themselves after. I think ever since Zach Wheeler went to Philadelphia, he has been one of the best starting pitchers in all of baseball. He's a top 10 starting pitcher in MLB as it stands. And looking at all these stats compared from 2021 on, that's Logan Gilbert's debut year. He's made 88 starts, 495 and two thirds innings. Like he is about 70 innings behind Zach Wheeler and only two less starts. So one, Wheeler's going deep every single time. He is obviously a premier pitcher in his prime during these years, whereas Logan is building up to his prime. Could Logan reach Zach Wheeler heights? 
I might knock him down a couple pegs. I don't know if he can. A guy that could very well reach Zach Wheeler Heights, though, is George Kirby. Top 10 Cy Young finisher. Elite walk percentages. Does not let guys on. And obviously, Logan showcased that very well in 2023 also. But you look at George Kirby's makeup, and it just shouts at you a little bit more that I have a higher ceiling. And Logan Gilbert, he's got a lot of great tools. But overall, Kirby's younger has showed more promise. Kirby is not going to cost you $17, $18 million in terms of a contract extension. He's pushing 20, maybe 25 in the, the later years where you're starting to really like, okay, in his first year that he is free agent eligible, how much money will George Kirby get on the open market? Well, Zach Wheeler got five years, 118 from the Philadelphia Phillies. They tacked on a three-year, $126 million extension on top of that as well. Wheeler will be getting $42 million for the next three years. Previously, he was getting around 23 and a half for the five-year, $118 million. I don't think you have to go that high, but because you're going to get more years out of it. So it's a seven-year, $140 million deal. That's $20 million on an average, but... To me, that still feels like it might be coming up a little short because we've seen what George Kirby can do. But even then, seven years, $140 million, $20 million average, seems like it might be a bit short for a guy that a lot of Mariners fans are picking as their Cy Young favorite when you've got Luis Castillo on the team as well. George Kirby extending him, not to say that it feels like fool's gold, like a fever dream, like it's too far out of reach. I would... I would bet more so on the fact that we would be able to get Logan Gilbert in a more attainable way. For Logan Gilbert, not to say that these two savant pages are that far apart, but Logan Gilbert is older and has shown less flash as terms of what his ceiling could be. You're probably getting Logan Gilbert on a cheaper deal than you would be getting George Kirby. My final sentiment for Logan Gilbert would probably be, like I'm saying, like six years, 100, maybe go to 110. I think it puts him at a free agent in 2030. You get a year, year, two years out of his free agency there. That puts him at his like age, what, 33 season? He'll be able to cash in one more time after that, probably for like a three, four year deal. To me, that could make sense. And by that time, if Logan's still shoving, he'll still get a pretty decent contract, right? It's not like, he's gonna fizzle out by that time and who knows maybe if he's putting up savant pages like this for like zach wheeler's last year he could get that three year 126 million dollar extension when the time comes but ultimately i know the conversations that a lot of mariners fans are going to be having is surrounded by brian bayo's six year 55 million dollar with an option tacked on for another additional 21 million so at its peak i believe it would be a seven year 76 million dollar contract if that's how the math works there i'm pretty sure that is still just too low for the likes of logan gilbert and george kirby like i mentioned shoot for a little bit more than mitch keller for logan and then for george kirby go even higher than that because the mariners have some of the best pitching in the entire mlb and for good reason we should want to try and keep them but it might be a little hard to attain and it's a hard conversation to have, like being willing to like let guys walk, but it's a conversation that we're having just because we know how the Mariners front office operates. But this pitching staff, it's going to be special. And I broke that down on a video I made earlier in the off season. Go check out that one if you guys enjoyed this conversation about a contract extension for either of our starting pitchers there. Thank you guys for watching and go Mariners.